What's going on, friends? When it comes to the air cleaner on your Harley, this is one of the most important parts of your bike when it comes to showing off your own style. But not only that, it also has a lot to do with the performance of your engine. Now, a lot of us just go out and buy the one we like, put it on and forget it, and we really don't plan ahead for our future plans. When it comes to the air cleaner on your motorcycle, we pretty much just look in the catalog, we find the one that looks the coolest to us, we order it, we have it put on, and we go on down the road without ever really putting a second thought to it. Now, the issue where air cleaners become a problem is if you really start to build up your motorcycle and you really wanted to get into some high compression and some large big board kits. Just like we talked about in the injector video, you can actually exceed what the, the amount of fuel needed for the engine that the injectors are going to provide. Now, the same thing is true with air cleaners. Before we get too far into the video today, please don't forget to hit that like button. That like button tells YouTube that you enjoyed this content, and it also helps us get this content recommended to others that are looking for some information about their Harleys. Now, the bright spot about air cleaners are that you can't overdo it when it comes to the air cleaner. But at the same time, you can definitely underdo it when it comes to the air cleaner, and the bigger you build your bike out, the more power you put into it, you can really start starving your bike for air. Now, as we're all aware, when the bikes come from the factory, you get this choked off air box, basically, on just about any new Harley model. Now, Harley has gotten better here in later years, and they started doing this with the Twin Cam 103HO, at least on the soft tail and Dyna models at the time. Harley started giving you more of an open element air cleaner, but it still had a paper filter in it. But if your factory bike didn't come with an open element air cleaner, you had a really gnarly looking choked off air box with a little snorkel in it that that big V-twin is actually supposed to pull air through. And what's bad about that is, yeah, it satisfies the EPA requirements for noise and recirculating all the oil and hot air back to the engine, but it really makes a bad situation worse. Those bikes already aren't getting enough fuel, and then, at the same time, they're not really getting the air they need, so they run like crap. So naturally, the first thing you do when you get a stock Harley is you go ahead and put a set of exhaust on it, and you put an air cleaner on it, and of course, you tune it. Because none of that does any good unless you tune it. Now, one of the worst things that you could possibly do is go out, put pipes on it. Putting a set of slip-ons, hmm, that's okay. You could generally get away with that without a tune. Now, where a lot of people really make a mistake is they go put a high-flow air cleaner on the bike and they don't tune it. So you're getting more exhaust out, your ECM's already compensating the best it can for the exhaust, and then you start adding more air into it, and that's when things really start to lean out. And this is even worse on carbureted bikes. Fuel-injected bikes can somewhat deal with it, but carbureted bikes, that's a big no-no. Now, for the most part, any air cleaner out of the catalog is gonna work just fine on your bike if you're just putting pipes on it, a set of cams, or a mild big bore kit. These are gonna provide more than enough air than what the bike can possibly use. And just any old air cleaner out of the catalog, you buy the one that looks the best to you. A lot of times buying an air cleaner, it's not just for performance, but for comfort. Depending on how tall you are, what bike you ride, a lot of times you guys probably will be able to relate to this, you ended up riding with your knee right up against the air cleaner. So generally going with an aftermarket style air cleaner, that's gonna get that air cleaner moved up and out of the way and give you some more room for your knee on the right side of the motorcycle. So when it comes to ordering an air cleaner, pretty much anyone's gonna work, even the real fancy ones that, got, that look really trick, but they really cover up the air cleaner element. The bike's still gonna be able to breathe with a set of cams in it, you got your exhaust, maybe you're doing a little higher compression, and maybe a mild big bore kit. You're still gonna be okay there. But if you're really taking your bike to the next level, really getting into the extreme, you're taking your 110 to a 113, you're taking your Milwaukee 8, you're going up to 120, when you really start putting the power into these and you're really going to start needing a bigger set of injectors to fuel it, you really need to be thinking about your air cleaner as well. You get a lot of these air cleaners that have these fancy covers on them and you dang sure don't really want to be running one with the stock cover the one that eliminates the air box behind it, but it still fits behind the stock cover, these can become very restrictive on very large bore engines. Now, the larger bore of engine that you go with, the more power you put into that motor, and if you have an air cleaner that's basically holding the engine back, 
Say you have a 128 inch twin cam motor, there is a reason why on those 128s and those 131 Milwaukee 8s that Harley Davidson recommends that you use the ventilator air cleaner or the heavy breather because these are basically unrestricted air cleaners that are going to allow that air to flow into the engine to be able to produce the power that's advertised for those. And it, honestly, as bigger as the motors get, it can be as much as a 10 horsepower swing just based on what air cleaner you choose. Now I know nobody really ever makes a huge deal about the air cleaners because they really are kind of the first thought on the motorcycle, but as you're building up the bikes, they're really not something that you're concerned with at that time. You're more worried about, oh, what about my clutch? What about my transmission? And you're thinking about all the other things that you've got to do to support that power that you're putting into the bike. But we usually forget about the air cleaner. Now, the other thing when it comes to the air cleaners is you really want to plan ahead on what you're going to do to the bike. Because as you guys know that have been in the catalog, air cleaners are not cheap. About the cheapest, most basic one you can find out there that's basically not from Amazon is going to run you about 200 bucks. Now starting at 200 bucks, air cleaners, they can run you as much as $500 depending on what brand and how fancy you get with them. Now the last thing that you want to do is go out and spend $400 on an air cleaner only to start upgrading your motor and then you decide that you want to put a bigger throttle body on it. Now throttle bodies, that's a that's a whole other topic for another video on putting bigger throttle bodies on, when you need them, when you should put them on, and you can definitely waste your money on a throttle body. It's a lot of money for a little gain if you don't have the right motor for it. But anyways, back to air cleaners. Now, if you spent $450 on an air cleaner, you put it on the stock throttle body, and let's say you start building up your engine, and you are to the point where you need a larger throttle body. You can't use your stock air cleaner that you bought. You can't use that air cleaner that fit that stock throttle body because chances are you're going to a larger millimeter throttle body it's got a bigger opening on it bigger throat stock one ain't gonna work and basically if you want to put an adapter on it that kind of defeats the purpose because you're choking it down at the inlet and that is kind of where a screaming eagle will get you with their stage four kit they add that larger throttle body in there then you have to buy 350 dollars worth of air cleaner or more depending on what it requires because you have to buy their accessory air cleaner that fits that larger throttle body. So you're already out another 350, 400 bucks for the one you bought for your stock one. And that's also the other issue with the Screaming Eagle kits that require the throttle bodies. You're really kind of locked into Harley Davidson's air cleaner. Because if you like, say for a Sportster, whether you like it or not, and you put a stage four kit on a Sportster, you have to buy the heavy breather. So guys, if you're wondering about how air cleaners do relate to horsepower, Yes, they do make a difference, but you have to really start getting up into a monster motor before you really have to start thinking about what kind of air cleaner you're going to put on the bike. And if you look at a lot of different companies out there, say like Fuel Moto or like SNS, some of the bikes that they have built and what they recommend, if you'll notice on those air cleaners, they're very plain Jane, large element. They basically they don't run any fancy covers on them. You have a cover on the end just basically a little decorative cover but the element is left open and unrestricted and that's what you want when you really start putting some power into the bikes because as I mentioned the bigger the motor this can be as much as a 10 horsepower swing but if you're really just looking at doing some cams some mild compression you're not going to get too crazy mild big bore kit maybe a little bit of head work you can generally run just about any air cleaner you want and one question that always comes up that seems to be a little confusing is take Arlen Ness's air cleaners, for example, the big sucker air cleaners, the stage one and the stage two. The only difference in the stage one and the stage two is that the stage two basically has a larger filter element on it. So if you're not sure what you're going to do to your bike, go ahead and get the stage two because you cannot over air the motorcycle. No matter how much air cleaner you have on a, on a, mild, on a stock to mildly modified bike, the bike is only going to use so much air. It's not going to hurt a thing. So anyhow, guys, if you are interested in air cleaner upgrades and you're not sure what to get, generally, the best you can get is just go with an open element. Putting a k and in, in a stock air box, eh, yeah, you know, theoretically, it'll increase flow, but that stock air box is so restrictive about the only benefit you're getting is you can just wash and clean that air filter and put it back in. Anyhow, guys, that's all I've got for you this week. I appreciate you hanging out with me to the end of the video today. 
You guys blew me up this weekend with comments. I apologize it took me so long to get back to everybody. I try to respond to every single comment you guys leave. I do read every single one of them, but I got swamped this weekend with comments. So it took me about an extra day or so to get caught up, but I do appreciate the comments, guys. Keep leaving them. Keep leaving your video suggestions. And please don't forget to hit the like button and consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already. But until next week, guys, dodge the cars, ride safe, bundle up, get those leathers out. It's getting cold out there. At least it is here, unless you live in Florida or something. But anyhow, guys, I appreciate you watching, and I'll catch you all in next week's video.